G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me, and three months ago I planted a bunch of different kitchen scraps that I salvaged from the kitchen. Instead of throwing them in the compost, I thought, let's plant them out and see if we can grow anything. And in this video, I'm going to show you the results. Let's get into it. Now before I get into what I planted, let's just do a bit of background. You might have seen on YouTube, there's plenty of viral videos going around on growing things like garlic, onions, celery, lettuce, put into glasses and left to shoot. People think that, wow, that's just amazing. A lot of the time though, it's gimmicky. The simple fact is you just can't sustain a plant with water only in a glass, in the kitchen or on a kitchen bench indoors. It will grow for a little while, but then it will pitter out. Honestly, if you're serious about regrowing any type of vegetable from kitchen scraps, whether it be something you've salvaged from supermarket produce that you've brought, or even from your own garden, you really should be planting it back out in an environment where it could get the best chance of regrowing. Somewhere like in a garden bed or hydroponically, if you've got a good hydroponic setup that you can deliver nutrients to that plant. So what kitchen scraps did I end up planting here in the garden? Well, I selected ones that were fairly common. I planted a cabbage with the base cut off it, obviously, because we ate the top. A lettuce base, a celery base, an onion that had sprouted, and also an onion base, and several carrot bases. Plus, I cut the base off a tomato and buried that into the garden, as well as a potato that had gone green. And I buried that wrist deep in the bed right here. So what we're going to do is go through and see how they all went. Now at the six week mark, I revisited this bed and I have to admit to you, a problem I had was I underestimated the space that would be needed. I didn't realise the potato plant here would grow so big and shade out so many things. And I didn't want to waste that half of the bed. So I planted potatoes in on that side that was separate to this experiment. And they started to encroach over. And I had to fix that up and try to pull these potato plants away. They grew so well, they were just about taking over the whole bed. So that did impact on the experiment somewhat. So keep that in mind as we go through this. Okay, it's been seven weeks since I planted these kitchen scraps to see how they would grow. And as you can see, it's hard to see. This potato that I planted has absolutely taken over a quarter at least of this round raised garden bed. We also planted a lettuce and have a look at it. It's massive. It's got a couple of couple of heads so it doesn't ha doesn't hasn't just grown back one head. It's grown several kind of heads, one, two, about three, four, which is interesting in itself. And the celery, it's not growing back nice and big with big stalks, but it's small stalks nevertheless. And the onion, that has grown several healthy looking stalks out the top. And the half an onion that I just cut the base off and planted is starting to sprout as well. The carrots, they've sprouted. They're not doing as good as I expected. It's probably because they've been shaded out. The tomato, hasn't sprouted at all. I've got a suspicion that that tomato is sterile. But anyway, let's have a taste of some of these, especially the lettuce and the celery, and see if they taste okay. Because it's one thing to grow really well, it's another thing to be edible. Check it out. Let's try a tender young one first. Yeah, pretty good. That's nice. Nice and sweet, that's a cause that I know. Let's try some of the older leaves. Not as tender, I think better, almost sweeter. Let's try the celery. Let's just break off a little piece. Let's taste the stem first. Yeah, tastes like celery to me. It's the stems that I like to cut up, have in soups and that type of thing. Leaves are a bit bitter, but nevertheless, it is growing back. We'll keep this experiment going and see how it turns out. The onions, I don't know if we'll get much out of that base of an onion, but the old onion here that was already sprouting, well, it's probably got a way to go. But if I was just harvesting it for the tops, which you could do, let's just break one off and 
and have a taste. Well, it's got a very sm strong oniony smell, about a nice, sweet, strong onion smell. So you imagine that chopped up, sprinkled on some roasted potatoes or something like that. Mmm. Well, that's nice. Yeah, it's not spring onion. Nevertheless, I like it. It's really nice. So if you're growing it just for the tops, it's worth it. I am going to harvest more of this cause. Just cause. Just because. Why not? And we'll have that for dindins. So that was after seven weeks of planting and you could see that it's changed considerably since then, several weeks on from that now. The potato plant has died back, the lettuce has gone to seed, the celery has gone considerably bigger and the onions are starting to probably go to seed too. I might as well start now from the front of the bed and work backwards. You can see the end of this potato crop here. There's several on top of the surface. There's a whole heap of beetles in here as well. Wonder if they're feeding on the potatoes. See all the beetles? It's almost like compost beetles. They're little roly poly things. Anyway, this is a nice sized one. Ah, oh, there you go. The beetles are starting to eat the potatoes. I'm leaving in there a bit too long. Anyway, that's that's not. That's not the regrowing fault. That's my fault of leaving it out too long and not harvesting. Let's give this a bit of a dig out. Cool. That's good. Another big one. One potato is all that I planted. And we're getting quite... That's another nice sized one. We're getting quite a good harvest here. Here's some more, smaller ones. So there you go, from that one potato, we got seven good sized potatoes back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You know, seven or eight if you count all these little ones together. And we would have had more if it wasn't for me leaving it in too long and letting the bugs start to get at those potatoes there. So we lost two out of that. I think that's a really good result. You know, remember this is turning a supermarket potato that had gone green into an organically grown, pesticide free bunch of potatoes, probably worth about five or so dollars, but it's not the money. It's not just the money, it's the health, it's the regrowing, it's the less waste, it's the rejuvenation. You know, it's all those things put together. It's the exercise, it's being out into the garden, it's experimentation, it's fun. So there's a lot of things gripped together and it's a talking point at the kitchen table when you're cooking these fellows up and you're having something to eat, whether it be friends or just family, you know what I mean? This lettuce here has done its job. Yes, there are flowers here that I could keep, but I've got plenty of other lettuce in our garden flowering now at the moment, and I've got plenty of lettuce seed. This is a great demonstration of what you can do though. And because lettuce is true to type, you can keep the seeds and you can have lettuce year after year, or sometimes all year, depending on where you live. So let's get rid of this lettuce plant though, because I want you to look at the rest of this bed. What I forgot to mention in a row here is the cabbage that I planted. This is something that didn't work. I'm a bit perplexed. It seemed to have rotted out pretty quickly and I can't find a sign of that head of cabbage. I don't know, maybe a possum or a cockatoo came and stole it on me or something, but it just kind of disappeared. It probably just rotted out, but I've got a backup plan of a cabbage that I just knocked the head off. And it's not the same, it's not a kitchen scrap that I've planted back out, I know. But it does give an indication of if you can get that base of the cabbage growing, you can have a secondary crop out of it. To give you an idea, let's have a look at over here in the other garden bed. About eight weeks ago, I harvested one cabbage from this plant here. And now we have three. These won't get any bigger, so I'm gonna harvest them now anyway, and we'll see what's underneath. That's a good head of cabbage. That's the first one. Second one, something's very interesting here. And the third one, which is pretty small, but still, I mean, it looks like a Brussels sprout, a big one. Underneath here, you can see how it's regenerated. 
In fact, there's two more heads that probably won't develop. These are mini cabbages anyway. They're not full size cabbages. So if you're thinking they're not very big, they're meant to be small. They're a mini variety of cabbage. But yeah, in this case, it didn't work out for me, but it can work. So trust me when I say that. So let's talk about the carrots that I had planted here. The carrots grew okay for a little while. And again, it's one of these things where I never expected those carrots to grow new bases. That just won't happen. That's a myth. And if people tell you that on the interwebs that you can grow a new carrot root out of a scrap of carrot, well, that's just not true. But what you can grow is the tops and those tops can turn into seeds where then you can sow and get carrots. So that's what I was trying to do there. But because of those crops growing so well, they smothered out the carrots and the carrots lost energy and eventually they died back. But you get the gist, if you were going to plant them for the seeds, well, that could work quite well. Now let's move across now to the onion. Now I planted one full onion that had sprouted. That's a common thing in the kitchen. You have an onion that gets old and it sprouts. What can you do with it? Well, you can plant them out. Now again, I haven't had a heck of a lot of success with this one here. Earlier on, it grew quite well, but now let's just pull it out. Have a look at that. See how that's all separated? See that, like almost like a garlic clove? Those bulbs can get a lot bigger. When you plant one of those, especially those brown onion varieties that have sprouted, what can often happen is they grow like a shallot. This could expand out oh, eight inches or so more. And by the end, if you, I planted this a bit late in the season. That's probably why, and it's just getting too hot now. But if I would have planted them earlier, well then I think I would have got a much better result out of it. Now the celery. Here's another one that actually surprised me a bit. It grew very well. Not bad, the stalks aren't as huge as what they were from the supermarket, but it still grew back good enough. This is totally edible, totally good for cooking soups or whatever, you know, celery sticks. And uh, it, it's worked, it's actually worked. Look at the root ball. Hokey, crikey. I mean, it is, must be as hardy as anything growing this stuff. Again, this is another keeper. And it will continue to grow too, or it would have if I didn't pull it out for scientific purposes. Of course, I'm gonna cut this off and we'll take it inside and we'll eat it. But yeah, fantastic. There's so many things you can do with this that was once a small kitchen scrap that was gonna to go to the chickens or the compost, but instead now is a fully grown plant again that's totally used back into the kitchen. And the last thing I wanted to talk about is this tomato here. Planted it right there, so it should be here somewhere. It's probably completely composted down now and eaten by worms. No, I didn't bury it that deep. Yeah, it's gone, absolutely gone. Well, it either just never made it, this tomato, because it might have been just rotted down and the seeds didn't make it, or the tomato was sterile because often the ones that they get at the store are sterile, or if you do get to grow them, they're not true to type anyway, and they're a crossbred, and the plant that you get might be pretty ordinary and not very good for disease, and it's probably just rotted away, or any little seedlings that sprouted probably couldn't make their way through for some reason. But sometimes you do get some great successes from supermarket tomatoes in the garden. And obviously if they are heirloom tomatoes from the supermarket, you usually can grow them quite well into the garden and they're true to type. Overall, I'm pretty happy with these results and I'm glad that I was able to show you what can happen when you plant kitchen scraps into the garden like this. I thought it was an interesting experiment to try and I hope you found it interesting. If you did, make sure you give it a big regrow thumbs up. Regrow that thumb. It was half a thumb. It was the base of a thumb. And then you regrew it to a big thumbs up. And share the video around. Sharing this video around would help me out heaps. Sharing and thumbs upping really helps the channel out. So it's very important. As to is subscribing. I'm nearly up to my mill for subscribers. It would be great to punch over that soon. 
Well, thank you so much for watching. Bye for now. Yeah. No, happy with it. Happy with it. Would have liked the tomatoes to grow. That was the vision. Would have liked carrots to get to seed. That was the vision. But it, it gives you an idea anyway. Yeah. Yeah, worth an experiment. But that's gardening. Like I said, doesn't always go to plan. But you've got to show the good and the bad. Cheers.